Welcome to Tug's Mysteries, where we discuss the loose ends with the show and discuss what could have been. Today we'll be looking at the infamous US dub for Tug's, which was made to sell Tug's to the US investors. Due to various reasons, however, it never came through and not much of this original dub has been released publicly. So, let's discuss that. Oh yeah, by the way, today I bring a special guest star for this video for you all. I welcome Pumpkin's Box for being the guest star of this video to discuss the interesting history behind this dub of the show. Thanks for bringing me on, Hazel. Glad to be a part of this video. No problem, Pumpkin. So with that all being said, let's get moving on. After Tug's initial broadcast on CITV in 1989, David Mitten and Robert Cardona were sought out in bringing the series to American viewers. Since the show's main characters as well as the harbor were based off of real-life American tugboats, it was believed a US dub would be received well. The voices of the characters, which were mainly British such as Geordie, Cockney, and Welsh, were replaced by American accents such as New Jersey, Texan, and New Yorker accents. Some lines in the episodes were rewritten to tone down some lines to better appeal to the US. A US dub of Sunshine, as well as two other unknown episodes, were produced. The Sunshine US dub was made purely as a demo to introduce the concept, as the dub featured temporary slash missing sound effects as well as pitched down audio. Unfortunately, the dub never went through most likely due to the lack of interest from investors. So first, the dub was shelved and was never used again. So what's the catch? Well basically, while never aired, two copies of Sunshine's US dub were produced. These copies are in the possession of Tugs the Exhibition, who privately screamed at one of Eva in 2019 alongside the sizzle reel, more on that in a minute. Although never publicly shared by the group, they have confirmed details on it from a review they published in 2023. Allegedly, the footage was somewhat different, most likely to accommodate the different line timings with the line delivery. There's also a few elements from the 15 minute cut that carry over to the US dub, Namely, one of Sunshine's missing lines of dialogue from the 15 minute cut is implemented. Nice one, Zoran. Well done, Zoran. Well done, Zoran. What happened? Let's go, Zoran. What happened? The video was hidden from the public for a long time, until in October of 2021, when an anonymous user who went under the name of Captain Star leaked a low-quality audio recording of the full video online, albeit in two different parts. Unfortunately, only a day after the audio was leaked, the dub's voice actor for Captain Star, Jack Angel, passed away. Later on, the leaked audio for the dub was cleaned up by MK the Instrumentalist and was uploaded to the Star Switcher's YouTube channel. So. We have the audio, and we do know the footage was allegedly different, but there's still lots of questions to ask. Who voiced who? What episodes were dubbed? Is there any connections to the Bill Mitchell dub of the sizzle reel? And, most importantly, why were investors uninterested? So, let's go down each of these one by one. Unlike the original UK dub, the voice cast for the US dub was credited. Most notably, Tencent was voiced by Rob Paulson, Sunshine was voiced by Charlie Adler, Top Hat and Hercules were voiced by Alan Oppenheimer, and Captain Star was voiced by Jack Angel. In general, Pumpkin and I thinks the use of these notable voice actors in the industry are very interesting. It reminds me of how Thomas the Tank Engine used some notable star power for most of their narrators. Next, I want to kind of go into what episodes were tested for the US dub. There isn't a whole lot known, in fact, we only know that Sunshine was one of the only episodes tested for the US dub. Some have speculated that the two other tested episodes were likely intended to be upriver and jinxed. This is due to a document mislabeled as December 23rd, 1989, the document was actually written in 1988, scheduling jinx and upriver long and short versions to be edited since the VHS versions of the episodes were released as 15s, on the same tape mind you, this could be a subject for another video, why would they be editing Jinx and Up River after the 15s were already a thing? Well, this is where the theories of them being edited to 20 minutes for the US dub comes into the picture. Now, there is some debate if this is actually true or not, as the document that chronically follows this one removes specification of the long slash short versions being edited. However, you can just hand wave that that the document was possibly simplified, as Jinx for some reason is referred to as simply as Jinx without the ED. Although Big Freeze in both is still referred to as simply 
3. So it being simplified could not hold that much weight. That being said, it is somewhat plausible with a bit of hand waving with the documents. I'm sure you are all familiar with the promotional sizzle reel for tugs by now, so I will keep it short here. In 1988, a promotional reel for tugs was created early in production in an attempt to sell tugs to larger audiences. Said reel was lost for quite some time, with the only knowledge of a UK dub narrated by Lee Corns. On Christmas Eve of 2023, the Tugs Project uploaded a full HD copy of the sizzle reel. However, said copy was an alternate version, being a US dub narrated by Bill Mitchell. Although this is a US version, it is unlikely that this is connected to the Sunshine US pilot. Lastly, why were investors not interested in the US dub to begin with? Well, basically, it happens to be with the biggest flaw with Tugs. This is not a good kid shows. Now, before anyone says anything, look, I love Tugs and I do think it is a great show, but it simply just doesn't work as a kid show. It doesn't have a consistent tone. One hand, the show goes into the topics such as getting contract work, the mafia, and especially can have its intense moments, but on the other hand, for some reason, the show can also have its really silly and stupid and funny episodes as well. What I'm getting at is, this Thomas the Tank Engine looking show goes into these and is not consistent with this tone. I'm not saying a kid's show can do these if it's done correctly, but Tugs isn't consistent with it, and that's its biggest problem. Plus, I can see why investors looked the other way when it was being pitched to them, and was the ultimate reason why Tugs never went to the United States. Besides Salty's Lighthouse and the board game, of course. So, yeah, that's basically all me and Pumpkin have to say about the US dub. Definitely interesting in terms of Tug's history, and while we don't know 100% about it, I'm glad we were able to dive in and guess what could have been. Pumpkin, do you want to say anything else? I personally think that the US dub for Tug's is a very interesting topic. While I myself prefer the traditional UK dub, the US dub is a really neat piece and I'm glad I was able to talk about it today with Hazel. Thank you, Pumpkin, for helping. Go check out Pumpkin and A1 Pacific's Tugs fan series called Ten Cents' Harbor Adventures. It's really good, and you should all give them some support for the series. This has been another fantastic video on Tugs Mysteries, and I hope to see you all soon. Credits to everything used in reference will be mentioned in the description. Have a toontastic, tuggerific day, everyone. Bye bye